So in this video, we're going to look at the angle between two vectors, and we're going to use the scalar, also called the dot product, to do that. First of all, let's define what the scalar or dot product is. So the scalar product, again, also called the dot product, is a way of multiplying two vectors together. It's not the only way of multiplying them together, but it's a way of multiplying them together. So let's say we've got a vector x1, y1, and z1. We want to multiply or dot that with x2, y2, z2. Now what this dot means is we take the first component of each and multiply them together. Then add the second components, multiply together, add the third components, multiply together. And what that gives us is a number or a scalar answer. Scalar just means a number, and that's why it's called the scalar product. So that's what the scalar product is, and it's most useful when finding the angle between two vectors. So let's box that off and move on to the angle between two vectors. So angle between two vectors. So let's say we've got two vectors, A and B. So let's call this our vector A, the one in blue, and vector B is the one in green. So this one's A, and this one's B. And the arrowheads indicate the direction of the vector. So the vector is going in that direction. Now the angle that we'll talk about between two vectors is the angle between the two arrowheads. So if I'm talking about the angle between A and B, and give you no more information than that, then I'm talking about that angle there, theta. It's always the angle contained between the two arrowheads. However, I could give you a bit more information. I could talk about the obtuse angle between the two vectors. So I've overridden the default of looking between the two arrowheads. I've told you that the angle is also obtuse. So in such a case, I'd be talking about this angle here. So if I give you no information and just talk about the angle between two vectors... It's just the angle between the two arrowheads. If I give you more information and tell you whether it's acute or obtuse, you then use common sense, the correct angle. However, for now, we'll stick to the default. And we'll go with just the angle between the two arrowheads. So what I'm going to talk about is the angle between two vectors. And therefore, I'm talking about the angle between the two arrowheads. So the formula that finds us the angle between two vectors uses the scalar or dot product. So the formula is a dot b equals the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cos theta. And that's just a formula that you need to remember. So let's now look at an example and we're going to use this formula. So our example, let's say, is find the angle between 2, 3, 1 and 7, minus 2, 6. So first of all, let's draw a quick diagram so that we can visualise what's going on. Now, our diagram doesn't have to be accurate, and it probably isn't accurate in this case, but let's just label this 2, 3, 1. And this one, 7 minus 2, 6. Now the quantities that we need to find are a dot b, the length of a, the length of b, and that will allow us to find cos theta. So let's get those quantities now. So let's do the, uh, the scalar product of the two. So 2, 3, 1 dot 7 minus 2, 6 equals... Well, 2 times 7 is 14, minus 6, plus 6, which is equal to 14. 
So that's one of the things that we need. Now the length of 231. So the length of 231. Well, it's just Pythagoras in three dimensions. Assume knowledge from GCSE that you know how to find the length of a vector in two dimensions. Three is no harder. Two squared plus three squared plus one squared equals, so four plus nine is 13. Add one is 14. So it's root 14. The length of seven minus two, six is, so the square root of seven squared plus two squared plus six squared. So 36 plus four is 40. Add 49 is 89. So it's the square root of 89 equals root 89. And now let's just use the formula. So a dot b, which we found out would be 14, equals the length of a times the length of b cos theta implies that cos theta equals 14 over root 14 root 89 which implies theta equals the arc cos of that so arc cos of 14 over root 14 times root 89 which in radians is 1.16. However, in vectors question, we typically use degrees, so I'll change the calculator mode back to degrees. I can see it's 66.63 degrees. 66.63 degrees. And that's actually some bad exam technique that I've given you there. Let's actually do a bit better than that. Let's write down the calculation that we did. So theta equals arc cos of 14 over root 14 root 89 and that makes it more likely that we'll get marks in the event of a wrong answer so now let's have a look at how we do that in the calculator so we wanted the value of the angle between 231 and 7 minus 26 well actually the calculator has a vector mode that we can use a little bit fiddly but once you get used to it it's quite good so it's mode 5 vector and we're going to define vector a three-dimensional so two three one let's press operation then define another vector let's define vector b now three dimensions and it's seven minus two six and as a rule if you ever get stuck on this usually press operation and it'll give you a lot of options Right, so now we want to do a vector calculation, so that's option three. Okay, again, operation. So if we scroll down, we can see we can do dot product. So vector A, operation, scroll down, dot product, operation, vector B equals 14. Yeah, that was right. Let's have a look now at finding the magnitude of the vector. So what we need here is the absolute button the button that says abs now that button can be found just above the left bracket so to get abs to get absolute abs abs of vec operation vector a close bracket press equals we get 3.74 now unfortunately it doesn't do thirds in this mode but you, what you could do is store the answer if you want to use it store it in uh, one of the letters A, B, C, D, E, or F and use it that way. But we can check this answer now because if I do answer squared, I should get 14, which I do, yeah. So that's how to find the absolute value. But the most useful one here, we can go straight to the angle between two vectors. Press angle between operation vector A. And here we need the comma, which is just above the right bracket. So shift then the right bracket gives us the comma. Angle between vector A and vector B equals 66.63. So there we have it. We've got the right answer. Now, if the question doesn't say show for working, it's fair game just to put it straight in the calculator, get the answer. 
I wouldn't always recommend it. If you can put working, you should, because it makes you more likely to get marks in the event of a wrong answer. If you've got a minute to go in an exam and you've got time to put in the calculator, just get an answer, it's worth doing. So let's now have a look at an exam question. We'll just put one here. So this question is simply asking us to find the angle between these two lines. Now the point on the line has absolutely no bearing on the angle between two vector lines. So we can, for all intents and purposes, ignore this point here and this point here because all that matters for the angle between the two vectors is their direction. And I'll just illustrate this here. So I've got that vector there and that vector there. Now I can move this vector anywhere and you can see that the angle between the two of them stays the same all the time no matter where I move this. So the point on the line has absolutely no bearing on the angle between the two vectors. So really all we need to take notice of is this vector here 2, 3, 4 and this one here, 1, minus 4, minus 2. So let's delete that. Right, so now, let's follow the method that we did before. So we want the dot product between them. So 2, 3, 4, dot, 1, minus 4, minus 2, equals 2, take 12, take 8, equals minus 18. The length of 2, 3, 4 equals the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared. So 16 plus 9 is 25 plus 4 is 29. So root of 29. And the length of 1 minus 4 minus 2 equals the square root of 1 squared plus 4 squared plus 2 squared equals root of 21. So we've got everything we need now. So now we've got the dot product minus 18 equals the length of A, which was root 29, times the length of B, which was root 21, cos theta, which implies that theta equals the arc cos of minus 18 over root 29, root 21, approximately equal to, so the inverse cos, the arc cos of minus 18 over root, over root 29 times root 21 equals 136.84 degrees, 136.84 degrees. Now let's just use the calculator in vector mode to check that answer. So let's go into vector mode. There it is there. So I'm going to define vector A to be 2, 3, 4. 2, 3, 4. Then define vector B to be 1 minus 4 minus 2, 1 minus 4 minus 2. So operation then, vector calculation, operation, scroll down to where it says angle. So the angle between vector A, comma, operation vector B, should give us the same answer, yes, 136. 0.84 degrees. We'll do another example. One last example just to make sure everyone's comfortable with it. So it says the angles A, B and C have those position vectors there where P is a constant. It says given that the angle A, B, C is 90 degrees, find the value of P. So let's draw a diagram. A to B to C is 90 degrees. So let's draw that. So A to B to C. So vector A, the position of A is minus 5, minus 10, 12. The 
the position of B is 1, 2, minus 3. And the position of C is 3, 6, P. Like that. Right, so let's just draw the lines. So there we've got A to B to C. And that there is a right angle. So now it says, given that it is a right angle, find the value of P. Well, the angle contained between the two arrow heads is 90 degrees. So those are our arrow heads there. So the vector we're actually talking about is BA. And the other vector we're talking about is BC. And this is a common mistake that students make. So this is the right angle. So it's the angle contained between these two arrowheads. And the two vectors are BA, not AB, are BA and BC. So the vector BA is A take B, which is minus 5, minus 1, minus 10, minus 2, and 12, minus minus 3 which is minus 6, minus 12, 15. BC is C take B equals 3 take 1, 6 take 2, and P minus minus 3, which is equal to 2, 4, and P plus 3. So when we've got a right angle between two vectors, a fact that we need to know for two perpendicular vectors A and B A dot B equals zero. Now the reason for that, if we look at the formula, we've got A dot B equals the length of A times the length of B times cos theta, but the angle is 90, and cos of 90 is 0, so that whole right hand side is just equal to 0, so A dot B equals 0, and we can just use that fact without quoting it. So, what we're going to do is do BA dot BC, and that should be equal to zero. BA dot BC equals zero, which implies that. Okay, so let's dot BA and BC. So, minus six times two plus minus twelve times four plus 15 times p plus 3 equals 0, which in turn implies that minus 12 minus 48 plus 15p plus 45 equals 0, which implies that 15p, let's speed this up with a calculator, so we've got, taking it to the other side, we've got 12 plus 48 take 45 equals 15. So 15p equals 15, which implies that p equals 1. The scalar product and the angle between two vectors. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.